dogs like the Bloodhound have been in existence for centuries used by noblemen to track game and the ritual of the hunt. The dogs take their name from the care taken in recording their ancestry or bloodlines so they were blooded hounds. Today's bloodhounds descend from the Saint Hubert Hound created in the 8th century France to follow difficult trails in search of treacherous games such as wild boar. William the Conqueror brought Saint Hubert Hounds with him when he conquered England in 1066 and it was there that the bloodhound eventually blossomed some 800 years later. The Victorians were famous for creating dog breeds as we know them today as previously there had been no breed standards and rarely any record keeping of bloodlines. The rise of dog shows and a widespread interest in keeping a fine or rare animals helped to save many breeds from extinction. The Bloodhound was one of them. His ability as a man trailer and the patronage of Queen Victoria, herself a noted dog lover, saved him from falling into oblivion. Man trailing with bloodhounds became a popular leisure activity and it didn't take long before the police recognized the bloodhound's usefulness in tracking down criminals. These days the bloodhound is still a favored member of many law enforcement teams and his testimony is even accepted in court. The Gordon Setter is a Scottish breed who takes his name from the Dukes of Gordon. It was the fourth Duke who began to develop the black and tan setting dogs that were common in the area. At the time they were known as Gordon Castle Setters and were renowned for their pointing ability, ease of training and great stamina. When he took over the kennels in 1835, the sixth Duke worked on maintaining the dog's field ability and making their appearance standard. Gordons were imported by Americans George Blunt and Daniel Webster in 1842 and the dogs were recognized by the American Kennel Club in 1884 making them one of the original AKC breeds. Today the Gordon appeals to a special subset of hunters and dog lovers who appreciate him for his noble good looks, scenting ability and mild manners. He ranks 98th among the breeds registered by the AKC. The bloodhound is calm by nature but by no means lazy. Forget that image of the sleepy hound on the front porch. This is a working dog capable of trailing a scent for hours or even days. Life with a bloodhound puppy can be best described as bedlam. Bloodhounds are master chewers and can easily destroy walls, doors and furniture if left unchecked. They will also eat anything in the hope that is food, including but not limited to rocks, socks, toys, plastic wrap, kitchen towels, etc. The list goes on and on. It's not unusual for this breed to require multiple veterinary visits or even surgeries to deal with intestinal blockages. Constant supervision and a good crate are essential to raising a bloodhound puppy. A bored bloodhound with energy to burn will create his own entertainment. He's a champion hole digger and can remodel your lawn in no time flat. Given the slightest opportunity, he will escape your yard to follow an intriguing scent and wander for miles before realizing home is nowhere to be found. He's not able to backtrack, so it's best to prevent breakouts by enclosing your yard as thoroughly as if it were Alcatraz or Fort Knox. The Bloodhound is renowned for his gentle nature, but beneath that placid exterior lies a tough, stubborn, independent hound. Training a Bloodhound requires skill, cunning, and what some might call bribery. Positive reinforcement, particularly with food rewards, is the way to win a Bloodhound's heart and mind. Force, on the other hand, will get you nowhere. When it's employed, the Bloodhound will simply don the mantle of passive resistance and refuse to do anything. For best results, begin training your Bloodhound when he's young and still somewhat malleable. To fulfill the Bloodhound's need to work, channel his amazing scenting ability with long, slow walks or hikes, permitting him to sniff out and explore trails. If possible, teach him to man trail, as he's born to do it after all, and get involved in your local search and rescue organization. If nothing else, teach him to play hide and seek around your house. His skills will come in handy when you lose things. When you walk your Bloodhound, he must be on a leash, otherwise he'll take off when he finds a good scent, going at a pace that you won't be able to match. Bloodhounds have no street sense and will follow a trail into traffic or onto train tracks. Pulling is second nature to this very strong dog, so good leash manners are essential. Start teaching them as soon as you bring your puppy home and work with a trainer that the lessons are in fact taken. Before we continue, please consider hitting that like and subscribe button as it would mean a lot. Thanks. Gordons are attentive and lively with agreeable dispositions. They are loyal to their family and wary of strangers, both characteristics that make them excellent watchdogs. If you introduce your Gordon to someone, he'll accept their attention but isn't likely to seek it out. A Gordon should never be shy or aggressive towards people, but he may be aggressive towards other dogs. He can learn to get along well with cats if he's raised with them since puppyhood, but he may view outdoor animals as prey. With children, the Gordon is a good friend, especially if he's raised with them. If a Gordon doesn't like the way a child is playing with him, he's apt to just walk away. A young Gordon may be too rambunctious for a toddler though. 
Though Gordon should be calm and quiet in a household, that is, until he sees you pulling out your shotgun for hunting or the leash for a walk. He has a high activity level and a daily walk or run of at least one hour, which can be broken up into two to which can be broken up into two or three outings will meet his exercise needs. He's best suited to a country home where he can practice his hunting skills. If you don't hunt, try him out in agility, dog diving, obedience, rally, or tracking. In the field, the Gordon is cooperative with strong drive and good scenting ability. He must generally be taught to retrieve, but he's capable of tracking wounded birds and bringing in dead game on land and from water. He often ranges out when he's hunting, but he's usually good about checking back in. This is an intelligent dog who is moderately trainable. He responds best to patient, gentle handling. In bloodhounds, the most serious and potentially expensive health problems are hip and elbow dysplasia, eye conditions such as entropion as the eyelids roll inboard, extropion as the eyelids roll outboard, and a condition known as dry eye are potential concerns. In other health problems that may affect the bloodhound is hypothyroidism, a common hormonal disease in dogs in which the thyroid gland doesn't produce enough thyroxin. Not all of these conditions are detectable in a growing puppy, and it's impossible to predict whether an animal will be free of these maladies, which is why you must find a reputable breeder who is committed to breeding the healthiest animals possible. Gordon setters can be affected by certain health problems. The most common orthopedic conditions are hip and elbow dysplasia, and an eye disease called progressive renal atrophy is a potential concern too. Hypothyroidism may affect the Gordon. It's a common hormonal disease in dogs in which the thyroid gland doesn't produce enough thyroxin. Cancers such as fibrosarcoma are also seen in the breed. Not all of these conditions are detectable in a growing puppy, and it's impossible to predict whether an animal will be free of these maladies, which is why you must find a reputable breeder who is committed to breeding the healthiest animals possible. The Gordon Setter Club of America participates in a canine health information center, a health database. Before individual Gordons can be issued a CHIC number, breeders must submit hip and elbow evaluations from the Orthopedic Foundation for Animals OFA and eye test results from the Canine Eye Registry registration foundation. Pen hip certifications of hips are also accepted. Bloodhounds have short, easy care coats in black and tan, liver and tan, or red and need only a weekly brushing or wipe down. That's where the easy part stops. The wrinkles must be cleaned regularly and kept dry to prevent infection. Be prepared to wash your bloodhound's face thoroughly after every meal and wipe his mouth after he drinks water before he shakes his head and sling water and drool everywhere. Use a rubber hound glove to brush the bloodhound's short coat, remove dead hair and distribute skin oils. You can brush the dog daily or weekly depending on your tolerance for finding dog hair around the house. Bloodhounds shed seasonally in the spring and fall. A tool called a shedding blade can come in handy during that time to help remove the excess hair. Bloodhounds typically don't need baths very often if they're brushed regularly. They have a distinctive odor that most people either love or loathe, so if you're a loather, don't think you can bathe the smell away. It's an inherent part of the dog and is something you must live with if you want a bloodhound. The Gordon has a long, thick coat with feathering on the ears, legs, belly, and tail. Depending on the type of train your Gordon is out in every day, you probably need to brush and comb him 1-3 to three days a week to prevent or remove tangles and mats, remove dead hair, and distribute skin oils. In addition to brushing, you'll need to trim the hair on the bottom of his feet and between his toes. The Gordon Setter sheds moderately. The more often you brush him, the less hair you will find on your floor, furniture, and clothing. Gordons also love swimming and playing in water, so be sure to keep the ears clean and dry to prevent bacterial or yeast infections from taking hold. The rest is basic care. Trim the nails as needed, usually once a month, and good dental hygiene is important, so brush the teeth frequently for good overall health and fresh breath. Check the ears weekly for dirt, redness, or a bad odor that can indicate an infection. If the ears look dirty, wipe them out with a cotton ball dampened with a gentle ear cleaner recommended by your veterinarian. It's best to introduce your dog to grooming at an early age so he will accept it gracefully. Alright guys. Which one do you think you'll get? Tell me down in the comments.